Okay, um, going back here. Right, I'm just gonna. So we'll go to. I, I often go to chessgames.com and have a look at the tournament thing on the left, uh, the latest tournaments. Uh, so if you go to the front of chessgames.com, uh, as as this shows, um, you'll see on the left there's new games. So I often look at new games. And we we can go into the Sigmund Co. And there was a game by Wesley So yesterday, which took my interest. Uh, so if we look at, or we can just look at the decisive games by say Black Wins. We get the decisive games. And Wesley So's there against Hector, and I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, so we can just grab the pigeon. I think I'll use Chess Base Light actually for the moment uh, to just copy that. With Control C, go into Chess Base Light, and all I'm doing is is a Control V now, and it puts the whole game in there. I, I don't know how many of you are aware of that, by the way. Little trick: Control C, Control V. So the PGN of the Wesley So game is in here now. Were all of you aware of that? Uh, we've got a different game in here, you see. So it's all been pasted in. Um, so look, Hector against So. So this is in the Segment tournament. Now this caught my interest because I wasn't really sure. I couldn't find many GM games about this sort of very dangerous Alakine Gambit in the French defence. Uh, so it did pique my interest. Um, we'll flip the board. So So playing white, French defence. And in its, it's in a line which I don't usually play. As many of you know, I, I often, uh, you know, take on e4 here, yeah, then bishop e7. But bishop e7 is actually the GM move most played, but I, I fear it, especially in blitz, because what happens is, uh, is this horrible um, alakine gambit, h4, and I don't know what GMs play against this. And I just don't like, I don't know what to do. Do you accept the pawn? Do you accept the gambit? So it's very interesting how Wesley So played in a very technical way, without fear of even casting kingside here, and he's under seemingly you know quite a lot of basic attacking pressure. He subjected himself to basic attacking pressure. Um, okay, so what he did was just castle. <laughs> so never mind this this bishop, you know, pointing at the king. Uh, you know, he might have f6 and c5 later. So queen g4, very direct from Hector. f6, doesn't mind about e6, of course. That will give black some initiative if, he, if white took on e6. And now just rook f7. So is this rather cheeky of black to castle into it and play rook f7? Uh, so white continues like this with queen g3, parking the queen with you know very direct intentions and now just knight c6 putting a bit of pressure on the center white castles which actually reinforces d4 so does white have a very promising attacking position here well Wesley just plays uh, queen f8 um, which looks a bit huddled to me but he's got an idea here I think of bishop b4 to knock out c3 then to play knight e4 and then maybe rook f3 and knight d4 later uh, I think that's the basic uh, fundamental intention to undermine d4 uh, how else would you undermine d4 you need to subject white to a, a sack on f3 to emphasize d4 so I think that's the basic plan so bishop b4 so he's going to take and then he's going to play knight e4 that's that's a major like uh, threat now so white takes, and then we see bishop d3. But again, you know, the, the standard h-pawn attack in this bishop looks really, really dangerous here. So how on earth did, uh, you know, where's he so wriggle out of this? So bishop d6, okay. Doesn't want to give black um, f4, particularly, for a check there. That could be useful for a check or anything, or rook f4. So now rook takes f2. I mean, this is like materialism as well in the face of a seemingly really direct dangerous attack so 
you know, Hector's 2588. Do you mess around with a 2588 like this when they've pointed all their pieces at your king? Uh, so rook f1. And look at these guys. Wouldn't you consider these to be spectator pieces here? Don't you think white's killing black here? Maybe he did go wrong. Um, should we just check in engine evaluation? I'm not really sure this is a recommendable play play with black, whatever the outcome. It's it's given as a slight advantage, okay, to white. If rook takes, rook takes. There's a slight advantage in theory. Or here, no, it's about gone to equal. Bishop takes e5. Then taking on f1, then queen e7. So the, the engine doesn't actually mind this position too much. And that's actually what happened. He did take on e5. Now, if white takes on f2, I think black will gain sufficient compensation. Oh, let's, let's just check that as well. Sorry, sorry. Let's just check that as well. So queen takes f2 here is probably not good because queen takes and you just take on d4. So black's really undermined the center and starts wriggling out here, I guess. Um, so that's, that's fine. White wants to avoid the exchange of queens. <clears throat> so rook takes f1. Now does queen e7. But now we, we have an aggressive continuation of the attack. Bishop g6. And this dangerous form pawn, what I call form pawn, is going to emerge on g6. But because of the king location on c1, um, you know, black is skating on thin ice, but he's making use of the fact that the king's on c1 for this resource queen g5 check, which is not possible here, of course. But whenever there's a queen g5 check, this pawn could be snapped up potentially. So just bear that in mind. So he, he does materialistically take, leaving white with a seemingly menacing pawn. So all white needs to do, in theory, is like this. Two moves. Just needs two moves. But the thing is, because of this queen g5 check, there's a constant problem about taking the pawn. So knight d4 actually was played here. Okay, which means knight f5 would shield the f file, and then, and then worse even so would be like queen h4 after, and then you know once black gets in queen h4, the attack could be snuffed out here. So, energetic play from white, rook f7, and now queen d8. So keeping an eye on this g5 square because that's a very important square here. If if white has to waste time. But I'm wondering, did, did white really miss a win here? Okay, so we, we see that the immediate queen h3 can be answered with queen g5 and queen takes g6. But let's just check, did black really have anything cunning here? Sorry, did white have anything cunning here? No, it seems as though, um, okay, in theory, queen g4, knight f5 is slightly better for black. Not too much better, though. Okay, actually queen f4 was played. Now we see knight f5. So now this carries the threat of queen h4, which would start to extinguish potentially white's attack. But even in that position, there's like rook takes f5 from white, uh, just winning a piece. So queen h4 is not immediately possible. But after g4, actually knight, knight h4 is played. And this provokes white uh, into an ag aggressive looking continuation. But, um, so, sorry, J Justin Nice has said rook takes f5 and queen e1 check. Sorry. After queen here, knight f5. Um, It's, it's tricky for white, so he plays g4, and in the end he sacrifices a rook, thinking, you know, th this is going to be really dangerous. But Wesley Slow just, just comes out like a sort of computer would, you know, check, check. He crawls his king up, check, check, and he crawls his king to e3, remarkably. <laughs> and look at these spectator pieces, but there's no attack left, the queen's stuck on h5. So g5, and now he defends his king with knight f3. And again, look, look at this queen g5 is threatened. Where are the checks? Where well, the checks have run out. 
So king d1, and after queen takes g5, that's the end of the story, basically. Uh, very soon, anyway. Sorry, very, very soon. King f2, threatening now queen d2 mate, actually. So where's white's attack? He doesn't even get a chance for g7. He's going to get mated on d2. He resigns here. So my basic question revolving around this game is... Is this a good way to play against this seemingly dangerous system? <laughs> to, to sort of try and make use of the, the fact that the white king on c1, this diagonal, can be used for defensive um, purposes. Just castle into it and hold on for dear life, it seems. <laughs> but is this really the way to play for it? No c5, no. He, put, he does put on immediate like pressure on the centre with his knight without any c5. So it's not the classic French defence type position. It's a very tactical uh, type of position um, where, you know, he, he... But to take on F2, I mean, this just seems so dangerous with these pieces here. What do you guys think? Would you consider swapping off one of your active, relatively active pieces when you've got two pieces like that? I mean, is that an engine move or is that an engine move? Rook takes f2. It's not even recommended by an engine. Knight takes d4 actually is given. Just allowing white to take here. And then, and only then, rook takes f2. So there, there isn't any rook f1. So the way he played it seemed to be on the verge of, like, you know, very, very dangerous. Uh, we see her about equal. Um, but you know th this this position is just looks ridiculous that these pieces never moved in this game and white's attack didn't come off here after bishop g6 because this looks like a nifty move bishop g6 sorry sorry let's let's just keep this on for a sec bishop g6 but then the engine actually doesn't like this move at all bishop g6 because it's actually giving um knight d4 okay Even here, it's queen h2 is actually given as an idea to allow the queen g5. So let's look at this technically. Allow the queen g5. And not, I guess, not play king b1 unless queen takes g6. But actually here, play rook takes f4. Wow. Oh, because that's attacking the knight. Rook f4 is attacking the knight. So white would win the knight, but still black would be better here in this position. Once he gets in rook f8, so rook h4, check, rook f8, and again, this, this check, I guess, is, is not that harmful. So black's king makes a run for it in this line, and is slightly better again. But that would seem to be much better than the game. Uh, so even even giving black the queen g5 but here um, so black in theory so here the, the best way apparently was, was to give black again queen g5 for this rook f4 to swap the knight because that knight's a target but that didn't happen again so instead um, now this is given as equal this position so he played queen f4, but queen g4 actually holds on to the pawn, and then queen h5 is dangerous. So I do wonder, was just black very lucky? Knight f5, queen h5. Okay, without sacking the rook yet. Now g4. Whoa! Do you see that, guys? g5 crushing! After bishop d7. So this is skating on thin ice. Okay, so he has to counterattack against the rook. Alright, is, is the point of the draw this, this kind of perpetual check? 
pro probably that's how black gets a draw by perpetual check here so that would have been the da very dangerous way of playing it just crawl the queen up on the light squares to get to h5 just simply protecting the pawn so what he played was kind of more spectacular idea to sacrifice the rook on g7 and it wasn't strictly necessary yeah it's it seems uh, it was dangerous after all I and mean, that's why I don't castle kingside. I thought, hang on, is he making a point you can castle kingside against this? But really, if you look at it objectively, it's it's only because this was a really unsound rook sack, it seems. Yeah, there's, this, there's nothing in this attack. It runs out of steam. Ma massive advantage to black. It runs out of steam. Mate, mate for, for white. So so basically, the, the, key, the key blunder going wrong seems to be you know uh, not keeping hold of the g6 pawn if you had played queen g4 here then queen h5 then you would have been okay so that this is still dangerous um for for black and black can't like take here i guess because ah oh, check no this is tricky as well check Oh, the pawn's going to queen, you see. If takes, then you queen the pawn. So you'd have to give up your queen. So that would be a terrible... So, so that, that that's the way to lose with black. Uh, so... G5 here... is crushing. So the only move for black here to defend would be queen e8. Just really threatening knight f7. Then you get rook takes c7 and g5, and you let black get a perpetual check. Okay, um, so yeah, I thought that was a very interesting, sharp game there. Um, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, let's stop there and look at another game from that tournament.